Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Honor the Feminine podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Ledford, and today is our second anniversary episode. And I'm going to be with you today to share with you my reflections over the past two years and where we're headed with the podcast. We're going to begin the podcast with an oracle card. I love oracle cards. They really inform my my ritual and my devotion day to day. So the oracle card message will just be infused into the container as we begin, and I'll share those with you. So for today, I chose from the Isis deck by Alana Fairchild, and it is Temple of Carnelian. And it's about trusting your own boldness and courage. It's entering the fierce belly of Sekhmet, and Sekhmet is the goddess of fire. And this feels so, so appropriate as I am stepping boldly and courageously into something new, into surrendering to more of a co-creation with the podcast and more of a co-creation with my whole life. And I'll be sharing some of that with you. I also am in love right now with the Keepers of the Light deck by Kyle Gray. And so I also chose from that deck. So Horus came forth for Cosmic Gateway. Your thoughts are magnetic and powerful. Miraculous changes are occurring. Interestingly, Horus is the son of Isis. And this card's all about the ability to manifest miraculous experiences. And that's also the space that I'm stepping into with you right here. So as I started to really feel into and reflect on the past two years, I got to really feel into what a transformative process the podcast really has been for me. And when I started a couple of years ago, the way in which I was looking to more fully honor the feminine was through healing around sisterhood and really attuning to my intuition more fully. And I feel like that has come such a long way where I I really am so much more attuned to my intuition and seeing the signs and the magic in my world. And I've loved sharing all of that with you. We are moving, though. We are shifting. We're moving and and shifting the podcast as I grow and expand, and we all grow and expand as a community. And so while I will continue to honor the feminine through honoring my intuition and and continuing to deepen in with that and in with sisterhood, now the edge for me in the way I honor the feminine is around embracing my shadow and really feeling into the dance of the divine feminine, divine masculine that goes on within me, those energies dancing within me. And as I've really started to work with those within myself, it's changed my landscape. And I believe that as we work together with those, we activate each other and we can make these huge changes in our world. And that feels amazing and important. So here's how all of this came about. A year ago, When we put out the first anniversary for the podcast, it was a Wednesday because that's when we put them out. Um, I took most of that day off and I went to Wake Foot Sanctuary here in Asheville and Wake's this beautiful place where you, they bring in these copper urns of warm water and they're infused with the, the Epsom salts and the essential oils and the botanicals of your choice in this recipe. And I've got my feet in the copper urn and I'm in this beautiful space and I have chosen this blue stone, um, to commemorate the first anniversary of the podcast and the stones with me. 
And I really, for the first time, deeply communed with the podcast. She has her own energy and persona, and she came to me as this golden Egyptian goddess, all gold energy. Um, the next day I saw a picture of um, Elizabeth Taylor as Cleopatra, and it was reminiscent of that, that that beautiful costume with the, the gold coming over and the gold coming out from her arms. And um, I got to really know the podcast. I got to know who she is more. We started to really commune with each other. And I got committed and devoted to a deep relationship with her. And when I I talked about this a lot at this point last year, that when I first put out the podcast in 2016, I'd worked on it a lot. I said I was going to do it. And I just needed it out of my body. So like, out into the world. And I didn't show her the devotion of reverence at that time in when I was first introducing her that I really felt for her. And as I really deepened into that in the first anniversary, that's when she and I started to really commune. And it was, I mean, it like as I was sitting with my, my feet in this warm water, like I was overwhelmed by emotion and tears were streaming down my face as, as I could feel her energy and her like willingness to really come on and co-create with me because I was open to receiving it. And so in 2017, she and I, again, we started to commune and it was really fun and the we had this beautiful rhythm with the podcast and it was working and we were doing interview cycles where I would interview for, you know, three or four weeks and then those would come those interviews would come out over the coming months and it was really working. And then in October I um, was about to, I had this list. I had a list of 12 beautiful, amazing men and women who'd said yes to the podcast, to set, to had said yes to come on and to be a guest. And as I went to set out the scheduler email so that they could schedule times with me to come interview, it all felt flat. It felt like the air had been literally sucked out of the room. And I knew that I couldn't push forward. I knew that in that moment, I needed to stop, create space, and listen. So that I could listen and commune with her more with the podcast. So that we could start to feel into where the creative energy, where that inspired creative energy was coming from, where it would come from going forward, because it wasn't coming from that same rhythm anymore. And this was a really hard decision for me. Um, in my in my system, it felt really easy, like, of course, this is the right thing to do. But there were other things to consider. There were things around me desiring to be really in integrity with these men and women who'd said yes, right? And so there was that part of me that wanted to forge forward because I said yes and do these interviews and and then, and then take some time. But that didn't feel in integrity for me, for the amazing men and women I was having on, or for you. And so instead of sending out emails around, let's schedule a time, I instead dropped into sharing what was really going on with me and the podcast and how it was shifting and how I was feeling. So that 
was a really big shift for me. It was one of those signposts where I began to know that things for me had really shifted, where integrity is and being in integrity and doing what you say you're going to do is really important, but that it was more important to communicate my truth, right? To really spend some time to sit with what was going on and then really express my truth. These are big things. These are big things. So that's what began back in October. And I've just created more and more space to feel and commune with the podcast, to feel how we're going to move forward. And I'm really more, even more deeply surrendering to the co-creation of this space with her. I would have told you that I surrendered so much last year, and yet I can feel there's so much more deepening with that that we're going to do in this year. And surrender is one of my big intentions. And so I'm feeling, you know, that that being more on my edge with the with the shadow work and the dance of the sacred marriage between the divine feminine and masculine within, these are the, this is my access, this is my edge. So it's my access point to really big, rapid growth and expansion. And I'm inviting you to join me in this. I'm inviting you to surrender with me. And what I know is there's going to be some magic moments. There's going to be some awkward moments. There's going to be raw and vulnerable moments. And there's going to be moments full of pure, joyous laughter. That's what I know. I know all of that is there if I surrender to and open up to the flow of what's here for us. And I'm excited about that and, you know, afraid in some ways, you know, there's some of that and there's, um, there's some grief around letting go of the podcast that was, I deeply know it's the right thing to do, um, to release it and move forward, um, in this new surrendering flow, but it also, you know, it feels hard to shift. And so, yeah, I'm actually recording this on Tuesday, January 30th, and it'll come out tomorrow on Wednesday, the 31st. And there's a lot of cosmic and lunar energy around this. So tomorrow, Uh, on the 31st is a full moon in Leo. It's a blue moon and a lunar eclipse. And the energy around all of this between the new moon um, on the 16th and now to this full moon and the eclipse is around releasing. It's around releasing and shedding and coming more into alignment and authenticity and I can really feel all the energy of that. I can really, I can really feel it. That all sounds so beautiful as you can envision shedding those things you don't need, but there's also some grief and some transition and some process. And so one of the messages that came through was to take the blue stone that I bought on the first anniversary of the podcast and has been with me all year really as a touchstone, a touchstone for my growth, the growth of the podcast, the growth of our community, the communion with the podcast, our connection and communion with each other and release it. And the message was to take it to the labyrinth and release it. 
Now, I walk the labyrinth on a regular basis. It's one of my spiritual, devotional rituals and tools. And I really feel when I step into the labyrinth that I'm walking myself home to myself and deeply, deeply in communion. And so there was part of me that didn't want to let that go, that wanted to hold on to that touchstone so that I knew it was real, you know, so that it could hold all the energy from this past year so we don't lose it, so I don't lose it. Um, I had all of that come up. And then it was time to release. And so I had the idea that I was going to go to the labyrinth today and do this ritual and um, lay that rock down, that stone down in the center and release and, and, and surrender to even more of the co-creation of the podcast. And I had ideas about what that would look like and what that would feel like. And then things got a little topsy-turvy because um, I have a four-year-old daughter. I call her the Rainbow Unicorn. And she wasn't in school today because there were a few snowflakes here in Asheville. And so instead of this being a ritual just myself with my labyrinth, with my spiritual self, in my devotion with the podcast, it was the three of us. And in some ways, I really fought that. I had a really hard time surrendering to it because um, I, I had this feeling and of, of how I wanted to commune with the whole thing. And it was lovely to have her there. And she walked the podcast, the, the podcast. <laughs> she does walk the podcast with me. She walked the labyrinth with me. And as we got to the center, I spent a moment with that stone really in deep gratitude for everything in 2017. All of it, all of the ritual clearing, all of the grief, all of the deep work, all of the, the joy and the, and the freedom that, that has come and all of it. And then I handed that stone to the rainbow unicorn for her to release it into the center and I called in more surrender to the co-creation. More listening. More communing with the podcast to hear where we're headed. I'm also getting much more comfortable with not knowing. I am a woman who has longed and desired to know, know the details, know how it's going to turn out, all of those things. And I'm getting more and more comfortable with not having to know, with asking and seeing what comes back, with listening, with not having to, to white knuckle it anymore and to know all the things. And it's because the labyrinth actually taught me this. She taught me one step. Does that feel good? Okay, one more step. Because I found when I entered her on my birthday in April in 2017, as I was turning 42, that um, I was trying to look ahead to figure out 10 and 12 steps forward. And she slowed me to a pace of, oh, the next step, that step feels good. So we're going to do some ah, that's the next step. That feels good. And then if it doesn't, we'll back it up and, and re, rejig it and step again and all of it. It's a dance. It's a dance. So here's what I know. I know that I'm going to be coming to you more in solo episodes. I know that Ava Aldenolfi and I did some bonus episodes at the end of last year that we loved doing. And so she and I will be doing some episodes. And I will still be having on incredible men and women who honor the feminine. And it won't so much be about how they stay in touch with their intuition as much as more open 
more flow, more surrendering to what are their big shifts? What are they, what does surrender mean for them? Um, How does the dark play? How do those um, divine feminine and divine masculine energies, how do they show up for them? How do they dance with those? Um, All of that. And we're just going to keep stepping one foot forward. I'm excited about it. And so likely right now it's feeling like there's going to be one solo episode, one episode with Ava and I, and two interview episodes a month. That'll be um, some of the structure, at least for right now. And I'm just going to keep feeling in and some months may be a, a little bit different. We'll see. But it's a big ask for, to ask you to come along and watch this unfold with me and be present to all the awkward and all the magic, right? Um, yeah. And actually, it speaks to the surrender that I'm being so intentional about infusing into 2018 and co-creation is it really, it came up with this episode. So I sat down on Monday night to record this episode And as I did that, it felt forced and it felt flat. And I thought, oh no, I promised I'm going to put this out on the second anniversary. That's Wednesday, January 31st. It's also my mother's 70th birthday. And it's this, it felt like this huge gift to her, you know, this work, this community, this sharing of myself and my voice with you. And, you know, she has Alzheimer's, so she's, her being now isn't lucid enough to really know about this on, you know, in this earthly plane. But I sat with all of that and I decided I didn't want to go back to that energy of when I put out the podcast in 2016 of just doing it because I said I was going to on a certain date and I was pushing and forcing and dragging it along. Instead, I wanted it to feel like this. I wanted it to feel in flow. I wanted to surrender to it. I wanted to call in the guides and, and let the, my intuition play forth and, and, and let the, the energy of the podcast as she weaves with me come forward and dance here. And so I decided that I wasn't going to force it. I decided I was going to sit down on Tuesday night and if it came through, beautiful. And if it didn't, I was going to put it off a week and let some energy settle. And as I surrendered to that, it all became easier. It all just like opened up because I wasn't putting so much of my energy into the space. Now here's the interesting thing. This is the second recording of this episode because I sat down and it flowed through beautifully the first time and then we had some technical issues. And and then I sat again. Do I surrender to, to not doing it? Am I forcing it? Let's just sit down again and see. Then if I didn't feel connected, I was going to wait. That's what I'm learning. Being connected, having that flow through me, that's more important than anything else. So I would love to stay deeply connected with you as we go forward on this journey. And so there are some ways that we can do that. The first is to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes at Apple Podcasts, so you're not missing any of this. Another place of just deep connection right now for me is over at Honor the Feminine Rhythm on Facebook, our community there, where 
it's really a, a community space to, to share your voice and express your truth. And the interviews that I did with my brilliant allies, the short uh, video series that I did in January, that was really the bridge between where this podcast has been and where she's going. They are raw and vulnerable, and they're all housed there for our community over at Honor the Feminine Rhythm. And finally, follow me on Instagram. I'm loving it on Instagram. I'm, I'm doing Instagram stories, which I'm loving. And that's just also a beautiful place to connect. That's what I really am desiring is um, a deeper connection with you. A deeper connection with myself, with the podcast, and with you. All right, here's to a magical 2018.